Hey, what's up, Reefers? Low-key dying right now because I ate some really spicy Chinese food. So I'm dying, but I thought what better time to vlog than when you're about to die, right? So today we are actually not going to talk about the saltwater tank. Instead, I'm going to take you guys to my kitchen through the hallway and we're going to look at the fresh water ghost shrimp slash guppy tank. When I initially set up this tank, it's pretty much bare. It's bare bottom. I only got ghost shrimps. In fact, I, got, I still got quite a bit of ghost shrimp here. And the reason I have this tank is because Mochi is still taking live food at the moment. So I've just been feeding him damsels and ghost shrimps. And ghost shrimps are a little bit cheaper than damsel, actually a lot cheaper. So ghost shrimps is Mochi's stable diet. And 30 minutes before I feed them to Mochi, I would feed them some high quality flake food or uh, pellets food to kind of gut load them and now feed them. But that is besides the point. The point is that I do have this fresh water tank set up. Now, if you know me, you know I cannot stand a tank that just kind of sitting empty and I have to tweak with it. Whether it's salt water or fresh water. And this is the exact same case. Now, if you look back a couple of videos, you'll see the tank is a totally different shape. Uh, I kind of tried to scape it a little bit, added some of the um, uh, the freshwater plants, and obviously, if you if you know your freshwater plants, you know I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. Uh, since then, for the last two or three months, I started reading up on planted tank and what's the best way to do it. Um, in fact. Just the fact that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, just the fact that I have six guppies here shows that I don't know what the hell is going on. Uh, because apparently guppies need a lot more room than what this tank can provide. I even have a Paleco in here somewhere. It's like a baby Paleco, so I thought it would be okay. But a lot of you guys tell me that no, Paleco actually grows large. Even the smallest species, the Bristol, Bristol nose Paleco, needs at least 20 gallon. And at first, I thought this tank is 5 gallon. And then I went, I went, somebody asked like, hey, where do you get this tank? Where do you get the same tank? So I went back to Amazon to see what I bought. Dude, turn out this tank is two, I think it's like two and a half gallon. It's 2.6 gallon, I believe. It's not even five gallons. So I felt so bad, dude. So what is going to happen is that I talked to some of my friends and one of my friends is, is like uh, kind enough to take in. I'm going to give her two of my guppies. I'm going to give her um, the Tequila Sunset male and one of the female. I'm going to let her pick one of the females and also she'll take in the uh, Paleco. So we're good. We're good in terms of fish. However, if you know me, you know I cannot sit still. I, uh, I want to make sure I can uh, provide the best home and best looking tank. And right now, as I start reading more into plans, I was like, okay, all right, you know, uh, this is like Westeria. I'm not sure if that's the right way to pronounce it. That's actually um, totally, uh, these are way too large for a tank this size. Uh, these grow huge, like two foot, two foot tall and they expand, they're pretty wide. So obviously I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And in fact, I just wanted some kind of carpeting plants. I know nothing about it. When I was at, when I was at the LFS, I just was like, hey, yo, uh, these looks nice. Can I grab one? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so here we go. I got these uh, carpeting plants. I'm not even sure what it is. Now, but now that I look at it, now that I've done a little more research, these may be dwarf, maybe tear? If so, that's perfect because that's actually the kind of plants that I want um, in my next tank that I'm going to show you guys right now. So, I know I've been teasing you guys about having a large reef tank right here, possibly a 150 gallon tank. That is still on the table, but I'm really taking my time on it. I'm trying to buy the right system. I've seen some 120 gallon tank kind of came and go, but uh, I feel like Reef Squad, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this right and we're gonna go big. So I'm aiming for 150. However, that's not here yet. So I've been trying to find something to keep myself occupied. And of course, like I mentioned before, when I see a tank, I can't help myself but build it up, make it look pretty, and then possibly upgrade to make sure that the inhabitant looks, looks a little bit happier. So here we go. We got this right here. It just arrived today. So Black Friday, there are a lot of great deals at Black Friday. And Marine Depot got some excellent deal, and I've been a fan of them, especially on Instagram. They have like a really strong... The Instagram game is on point. They share memes, they're funny, they, they're hip, you know? And they, again, they do have good deals. So I've been following them, been interacting with them. I see that they have deals on tank. So I picked up this baby right here. Now this tank took a little bit to get here, uh, but I'm so happy that it's finally here. I've been looking forward to this so much. Okay, so 
Besides this tank, let me show you what other things are gonna go on this tank. I'm sorry, this is totally, this episode is like all about fresh water. That's why I kind of wanted to release it midweek because I know a lot of you guys are more into salt water and I feel like you guys kind of look at my videos more on Sunday 9.30, that's my standard upload time. So this is kind of like a bonus video. And hopefully you guys won't be too upset by me showing some fresh water stuff. So, you guys, if you guys are Hardcore Reef Squad that have been with their channel for a while, you know that I actually have two ONF Flat 1 lights. This is the original one that I've ran for almost half a year. I, I love this light. Beautiful looking, you know, uh, the light is powerful enough for even some SPS. Uh, they later on sent me a, a different one. So this is a hanging version, right? So, so they actually carved my name, well, inappropriate, the channel name on here, which I thought is super thoughtful. I'm super thankful for them. So I have this. So this is my first light, that's my second light. So once this light came, it replaced this light. So this light had just been in storage. And I figured, okay, you know what? These guys, ONF, they are actually really well known. Well, maybe not well known yet, but at least in Taiwan, they're really well known. And I think they built this light with Planet Tank in mind initially. And now they're kind of like trying to test it out on salt water. By the way, um, they work really well on salt water. I was gonna say spoiler. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was like oh, what's that word I'm trying to say? Spoiler. They actually work really well with salt water tank as well. So that tank has been powered by a ONF flat one for a long, long time, but I do have an extra one, and I know it's proven on a planted tank. So when, a time, when it comes time to upgrade this little tank right here, uh, the 2.5 or 2.6 gallon, I figure I want to get a tank that will fit that light. So that, this, if I don't remember, <laughs> It would be really, really sad and really, really funny if I actually remember the length from, but this is about roughly 24 inches. So I found an Aqua Max tank that is around the same length. That looks really, really, really clean. Now for soil, I was going back and forth on what I want to get. I do have some of the fluorites black, and that's this substrate here. So I still have some left over. But after reading up on um, plant, fresh water plants and stuff like that, it sounds like uh, I want something a little bit smoother. Uh, so it's easier for these guys to take roots. And in the future, if I want something like Cory cats and stuff like that, I don't want substrate with sharp edges. That may damage their, uh, their mouth or tentacles or whatever you call the little whiskers. So that's the reason I got the Aqua Soil from ADA. This is pricey, but Reef Squat, you know us. If we are gonna do it, we're gonna do it right, and we're gonna. Uh, well, okay. For, uh, let me let me backpack a little bit. Let me backpack a little bit. I'm not saying that other stuff are not good, but the fact that these are proven, right? Uh, all the com major complaint from these guys is pretty much like they're pricey, may not be worth the price, but quality is there. There's no dispute in terms of quality. And me coming in completely new, I know nothing, right? I figure like the safest bet if I have the funding, let me just go for quality things that are pretty much proven. So here we go. Aqua soil from ADA. I'm gonna try to um, pair this up, this up into that tank, and I'm gonna show you guys the tank shortly once I get to uh, opening it. And uh, once I get the tank up, I'm gonna put the light on top of it. And I'm gonna describe a little bit what I'm gonna do with that tank. All right, guys, I'm gonna go unbox. I'm super excited. If you can't tell, I'm like jumping off the wall. I'm so excited. Been a while since I've been so excited about a new product arriving in my house. So check, check back. Oh, I can't even speak. Check back with you guys in a bit. If you guys have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Be right back. Hey, Reef Squad, before I move on, I just want to show you the awesome packing job that Marine Depot did. All right, first of all, check out the size of this box. This box is huge. It's like three times the size of the tank, but it's filled with peanuts, okay? There's a lot of foam peanuts right here. And the tank itself is packed by three layers of these really thick bubble wrap that I'm gonna enjoy popping whole night. Uh, yeah, shit, I can't stop now. But uh, here's the tank, here's a sneak peek of the tank. Another thing I noticed is that, check this out guys. Somehow I am the VIP customer. That's right, VIP. Two hours later. Oh, reefers, some of you may understand, but when you see a well-built tank that has no rims, it just looks so simple and clean. That, oh man, that's just something about it. It's just something about the simplicity. Look at how the edge, just no sharp edge. It's all kind of fouled down 45 degrees. And look at the, 
etching of the logo. I mean, I wish it's not there. <laughs> but there's just something about an empty tank that is so simple, so sleek. There's just something about it. It's just so beautiful. It, it reminds me of like, whenever I go to local fish store, I'll see those um, deep blue. They make this rimless cube, small cube, like 2.55 gallons. Whenever I look at it, I just see all the different possibility and how I want to keep it so minimalist. This tank, this Aquamax, I think it's 9.1 gallon, gives me the same feeling. There's just something about an empty, rimless tank that looks super clean. I know right now there's all kinds of reflection going on. You can't really appreciate it like how I could. But man, I can't, I really can't wait to set it up. And I, I feel like some of you guys will understand um, what I'm going through right now. I'm just so excited, dude. And right next to it, we of course got the ONF flat one. And let's hope it fits. Otherwise, I'm gonna cry. Perfect. Perfecto. And I got a little, so I push it all the way back. We got a little space to play with. So I'm gonna set it, I'll probably set it near, closer to the front so I can run uh, lily pipes in the back. Oh man, this is gonna be beautiful. Look at this. So I wish I have another hanging light that I could hang over this. That'll, that'll look really clean, but even with the legs, man, it's gonna look gorgeous. I'll say the ghost room tank <laughs> is about to get a nice upgrade. And uh, oh, there's something I have to do for you guys. Wait. Right there. There you go. Now we are straight. All right, Reverse, so I know this is not a Planet Tank channel. So let me just really quickly tell you guys what I'm gonna do to this tank. I'm really sorry if you have no interest. I promise you I'll make it up for you this weekend. This weekend's video is gonna be awesome. Uh, but in terms of this tank, what I'm gonna do with it is that I've been doing a lot of reading and I, I realized that I really want a simple setup with, uh, okay, so first of all, of course, we'll have the soil, but I want dwarf baby tears. Now, for those of you who have been doing freshwater tank, I, uh, you know the reputation for dwarf baby tears. It's like pain in the ass, right? Hard to grow, needs CO2 injection. Usually people say, why don't you just get like Monte Carlo? It's kind of similar, larger leaves. But again, reef squat, we go all in, the best or none. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna try first. And one way that I really want to attempt is a dry start. So what that, what that means, if you're interested, uh, really quickly is basically I will put the soil in, I'll moisten it, I'll, I'll either put the plants on top of the soil or just put it in gently. And, uh, usually that's not completely necessary, but I'll keep the soil really wet and I'll saran wrap the top. Basically, the plants will not be completely immersed in water initially to start off. I'm gonna let it grow for about five or six weeks like that until the root takes uh, the root really has a strong holding to the soil and then i'm going to flood the tank and at that point i'll need to start injecting co2 and keep the light strong so this gives me about five to six weeks to really research on um, good filtration for this system or um, and also a co2 injection method that's not too complicated but i think co2 there's no way around it i feel like um, it is what it is i probably just have to bite the bullet and do it but in terms of filtration i'm debating because right now on Instagram, I've been kind of asking people what to get. And a lot of people recommend the Aqua Clear. Uh, it's between the Aqua Clear 20 or Aqua Clear 30. But that was before. I know I'm going the CO2 route where I'm gonna have more pipes. So that means that I'm already running pipes in the tank. So I was thinking, okay, should I just get a canister filter? So I'm kind of debating whether to keep the Aqua Clear uh, 30 or go for a Eheim um, Classic 150. I think that's the equivalent of the Eheim 2211. I think that's the model number. Uh, so this way I can um, hook it up to lily pipe. So everything is just glass pipe. It looks a lot cleaner versus uh, having a filter, uh, a filter hang on the back. So I'm still kind of on the fence about either one, but it looks like I'll have a couple of weeks to decide. And if I end up not using the AquaClear uh, 30, I may just use it to uh, finish cycling the, uh, the bikini rocks right there because I need some serious circulation in the back. So that is a plan here. I plan to basically um, do a dry start with dwarf baby tears. 
And in terms of actual hardscaping, it'll be really, really minimal because ultimately this still has to serve as a go shrimp feeding, uh, feeder go shrimp holding tank. So it has to be, I have to be able to net the go shrimp easily. Now, if you look at this tank, I kind of went overboard. I got all these huge plants in the way and then I got this uh, this spider wood right here and my net is gonna get like snagged. I, my net actually gets snagged up there quite often. So it becomes a pain to catch ghost shrimp. So for this tank, probably just like one or two, three pieces of like large rocks and everything will just kind of like flat, maybe like a small hill, but there won't be crazy plants growing out. Uh, but um, uh, if you know me, never say never, right? <laughs> but at least the initial goal is to keep it simple. So it is still gonna be easy to catch a shrimp when it's time to feed mochi. So here's the setup. I measure it out. I believe this tank should fit there perfectly. But however, because I'm doing the dry start, uh, and even if I do a wet start, I cannot add fish for a while due to the soil use. Uh, it has a pretty decent amount of ammonia to kick, kick things off. So basically, we're looking at four tanks. In my house, I, I, will, I will now have four tanks. One tank, two tanks, three tanks, and four tanks. Uh, so I think for now, I may put this tank on that rail right there, or I'm just gonna leave it right here uh, for it to dry start. Uh, so yeah, exciting time, exciting time. Um, <laughs> and these guppies, two of them is going over to uh, my good friend's house, as well as to Paleco. So the other guppy should live pretty happily in that large space right there. And I need you guys help, by the way. If you know freshwater fish, oh, sorry, freshwater plants, what are these? I absolutely do not remember what I bought. Are these dwarf baby tears? If so, that's fantastic. Because they actually grew a little bit already in this tank. Uh, it actually got a little bit taller, so I feel like the light is probably not the correct type. Well, it's not. It is the uh, Castle 880 with tuna blue. And this is as white as I could get it. Um, so if these are the... Um, Dwarf baby tear, they'll save me some money. I can just kind of divide them up. See, back then I didn't even know I had to divide them up. So I can divide them up and just kind of plant them on the uh, aqua soil. All right, guys, to the reef squad, I'm so sorry. This video is straight up all planted tank, but I feel like these are all the same hobby. I think I think a lot of reefers actually came from freshwater. Uh, the common path seems to be like freshwater community tank, and then maybe like African cichlids, and then they'll go into a uh, planted tank, and then they'll jump over to a uh, saltwater reef tank, right? So I'm kind of having things a little bit backwards. I'm pulling like a Benjamin Button. I go from like saltwater tank first, and then moving backwards to a planted tank. So maybe I'll get like a cichlid tank mix and then maybe a freshwater community tank. Who knows? But this hobby, I think is, uh, I mean, it all falls under the same umbrella hobby. So I hope you guys don't mind. And I hope you, this kind of, this may be of interest to some of you guys as well. All right, guys. So again, this is just like a quick weekday update. Uh, that's why it's kind of like a run and gun vlog format because it takes, uh, it's quicker for me to get this ready for you guys for consumption. So I'd rather have more content out for you guys than having them all to be super polished where I just crank out like one video a week. So I don't know, let me know what you think. Do you guys like more, do you guys re prefer more uploads but not as polished or do you guys prefer like less upload but more polished work? Uh, both is not an option. <laughs> not yet, at least. All right, guys, with that said, I'll see you this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Thank you for hanging out till the end. You are indeed the hardcore reef squad you are still reading, uh, if you're still watching this. And thank you so much. Hope you guys have a good week. I'll see you really soon. And be sure to subscribe if you have not already. See you. If I fit, I sit. <laughs>